Latest on Cyclones Freddy and Gabrielle in the Australian region on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 9th. So two tropical cyclones active right now, Freddy the stronger one, Gabrielle possibly affecting a larger area and certainly more populous areas, Code Blue in effect for that storm right now and it is the seventh to form this year so far. So two storms either side of Australia is the top story. 112 days until Atlantic hurricane season and nothing here right now, no areas of interest but a Significant front there, extratropical cyclone moving off the coast of uh, Newfoundland and out towards the North Atlantic. Elsewhere, fairly quiet apart from enhanced risk in the United States today for severe weather. Cyclone Gabrielle over there off the east coast of Australia. Most of the cloud cover staying offshore at the moment, uh, but it is a rather broad storm, certainly compared to Freddy, although Freddy is a little bit stronger than Gabrielle right now uh, at Category 1 on the Sapphire Simpson scale. Peaked as a Category 2 yesterday and a 90% now for the other area of interest that we're monitoring to the west of Freddy out over the open waters of the Indian Ocean and is expected to remain out at sea uh, but move quite far towards the west almost as far as the Masserine Islands on the other side of the Indian Ocean. Uh, but it looks like that Freddy and that area of interest shouldn't affect land. As for Gabrielle, it could be a threat to Norfolk Island, uh, a side swipe for Australia and uh, New Caledonia, uh, but New Zealand were concerned about for its extratropical remnants. Here is the latest rain rate on the satellite imagery around the world. Those red areas denote areas of very high precipitation values, most of those out at sea thankfully underneath those cyclones with a few monsoonal developments across the Indonesian islands and Papua New Guinea. Here is the latest satellite imagery on Freddy first of all uh, and you can see here it's not looking that great for it. Uh, it was doing much better yesterday and in the earlier hours of today. Look at those really high cloud tops earlier on but wind shear is really being very persistent on the eastern side of it. You can see there with its sharp colour gradient. Most of the satellite imagery we're looking at tonight though is Gabrielle and here it is on the latest Himawari 9 imagery with very high cloud tops over there in the Coral Sea and you can see the coast of Australia on the left hand side and New Caledonia every now and again on the right. Latest visible imagery looks like this, it's not affecting any land areas right now but it does have winds that are getting fairly close to hurricane strength and it could reach hurricane equivalent status later on today. Here is a wide shot of Australia and uh, Gabrielle off to the right hand side. It is churning and getting stronger as time goes on here and bubbling up with that decent amount of convection and possibly starting to develop an eye feature. Sea surface temperatures around the world look like this. Look out for 79 degrees Fahrenheit or higher for decent sea surface temperatures for tropical cyclones. That's 26 Celsius. I know we have both scales here, it can get confusing. But in the Caribbean there, 79, that's 26. In the Eastern Pacific, up to 81 there, that's 27. And look towards the Arabian Sea, it's the very deep tropics that are holding onto the warm conditions. But now onto the Southwest Indian Ocean, much more important basin at this time of year, Mozambique Channel up around 28 Celsius, off the coast of Madagascar towards uh, Mauritius around 27 to 28 and further out to sea decent temperatures there as well. In the East Indian Ocean around 27 to 28 where the two systems are and in the North Indian Ocean there we're looking at around 27 degrees tops. Off the coast of Australia though very warm conditions pushing 29 or 30 degrees Celsius off Western Australia around the northern top end around 20 28, 29, the Gulf of Carpentaria, very warm there as well, and the Coral Sea underneath Gabrielle, it's around 28 degrees Celsius there right now, so very fair conditions for intensification, even for a broad system. Western Pacific doing just fine, 27 degrees Celsius in the deep tropics, extending quite far north already towards Guam, and in the South China Sea, it's a little bit cooler at around 25 degrees Celsius in one or two spots further west. 
Uh, the anomalies, as you can see here on this chart, it's generally above average in the Western Pacific and in various parts of the Australian region. The Indian Ocean itself is pretty uh, uh, marginal, hit and miss. The La Nina effect is still there, but look towards the eastern part of the map there, uh, starting to get warm in the eastern area of the Eastern Pacific, which could be the sign of an El Nino starting to work its way in here. Latest uh, oceanic heat content charts show that the temperatures there and the energy amounts are favourable and up towards the western Pacific as well, uh, still holding on to its decent colours and even the eastern Pacific starting to throw up a little bit of oceanic heat content. To be honest with you, it's almost as high as it was last year in, during peak season, although how drab last season was there for oceanic heat content. So here's what the GFS model has in store for the Indian Ocean. You can see that 90% system strengthens rather quickly and then we have a twin hurricane uh, equivalent uh, storm, uh, two storms there across the Indian Ocean uh, which coexist and continue westwards generally. The first one moving southwards quite abruptly and then of course Freddy following it reaching a second peak there after weakening a little bit at first uh, but doesn't get much stronger than its uh, peak already if that. As for Gabrielle, there it is, uh, swirling towards the southeast and then swiveling towards uh, New Zealand. Certainly a strong system, broadens out category 2 or 3 at peak on the Sapphire Simpson scale. And look at that exotropical transition and then strengthening again as it pounds the coast of the North Island of New Zealand. And certainly a lot of strong winds over a broad area there and heavy rainfall, no doubt over that region so could be a big storm for New Zealand this uh, considering there that is showing hurricane equivalent force winds and this is the rain chart for that area as well you'll note there that Australia stays pretty dry but for New Zealand looking particularly towards the North Island you can see there towards the end of that seven day period we get some serious amounts of rainfall along the eastern coast of Auckland and Northland uh, and we could see possibly 10 inches of rainfall uh, towards the eastern tip of the North Island and possibly up to 11 around the Northland and Auckland regions and that is around 250 to 300 millimeters of rainfall in total. Still looking at decent amounts further south as well, 5 inches uh, possibly um, on the South Island as well, maybe getting to 5 inches there too, that's 125 millimeters of rainfall. So it could be a significant extratropical storm event there for New Zealand, much more so than it is in terms of its tropical threat, it's not going to be affecting many areas, just Norfolk Island. In the longer range, this is how it's looking right now in the Indian Ocean. You can see the further progress of those two tropical cyclones. And Freddy continues on westwards there after the other system moves southwards. And then Freddy finally gets sucked down there as well. And it does last for quite a while there, travels a fair distance. It's still active on the 19th of February, right at the end of that 10 day uh, period. And both systems do survive for quite a while, particularly uh, how they sink to quite uh, high latitudes by that point. And there we go. And for New Zealand, another look there at what happens to this extratropical cyclone. There it goes, striking through and then continuing southwards. Um, still has quite a bit of strength as it proceeds towards the uh, southern ocean and the Antarctic waters. Watch again as that storm moves through, weakening by that point, 14th, and then down it goes towards the Antarctic lands. And there it is, continuing off the coast there and moving eastwards towards South America. That's all the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items, our clothing lines, and our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for a Hone t-shirt, which is never going to go out of fashion, let's face it. In the Silly Range, what continues in the South Indian Ocean? Well, we just see the demise of Freddy there. It does last a little bit longer. How far? It must be gone by that point there, the 22nd. Then it gets... Um, condensed into another extratropical low but really nothing else to look at in that particular period uh, in the south indian ocean we're just uh, curiously watching what happens but certainly no signs of any other systems forming up there in the tropics uh, towards the end of february that of course can change at the drop of a hat 
Meanwhile, something that might happen in the South Pacific in the long range. This is what the GFS has served up for us. Another large tropical cyclone that forms near Tonga and moves southeastwards, becoming a stronger system, borderline hurricane. And then the other one, another one there in the Coral Sea originally, moving north of New Caledonia and south of Vanuatu and continuing generally towards the southeast. So maybe some more systems to be watching out for in the South Pacific which to be honest with you is my tip for activity uh, for the rest of the month right now. You can discuss that and anything else on the tropics front and indeed weather wise around the world. We are a very uh, broad space for chat about anything weather on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13. Well, what happened on this day? On February 9th, 2003, we had four active tropical cyclones, two of them of serious strength. Cyclone Dovey was the pick of the uh, products on that day in the South Pacific Ocean. There it is pictured looking very uh, decent. I think it was quite far away from any land areas. We also had Cyclone Fiona, which was in the uh, South Indian Ocean, the Australian region at that, Category 3, and two tropical storms in the Southwest Indian Ocean, uh, Jerry and Hape, or Hape. I have no idea how that one's supposed to be pronounced. Meanwhile, back to this year, and who knows where our eighth storm might come from now. I doubt it'll be the Atlantic though. The first name on the naming list there is Arlene, the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and in the Central Pacific, it's the much more unlikely Hone. In the Western Pacific, next up is Sanvu. In the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Mocha. Whenever the Northern Hemisphere seasons get started up, usually it's one of those two basins that kick it off. And in the Southern Hemisphere, next up now in the Australian region is Herman, in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Dingani, and in the South Pacific, it's Judy. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.